Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 169. Day, day 3169, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 169, we are in the process of solving the problems from the two practice tests that you will find, that you will find on the very end of the book, we are on test number 2, on page number 496, problem number 24, problem number 24 is what we are about to do, let's take a look at it, it says, it says that a student makes a conjecture, a student makes a conjecture, that for any integer n, if you have an integer, some quantity, a whole number, any integers n, then the quantity 4n plus 3, if you, whatever the whole number is, if you multiply that by 4 and add 3 to it, he surmises, he makes a guess, he makes a conjecture, that this quantity will represent the prime number. Conjecture is, by the way, vocabulary words, a vocabulary word that we learned on day number 31, 31 in our vocabulary series. And if you have not been preparing for your vocabulary, it is time that you start. Having decent vocabulary for the GRE is a must, as I tell you over and over again in all the videos. I know you're working on the math part because you are here, to, you are here until the very end of the series, so you have been working on the math, but vocabulary is just as, the, just as important if you have any hope at all of getting a decent score on the verbal part. Go to my channel and over there you will find a series of 100 videos where I have covered the GRE vocabulary words, words that appear on the GRE with regularity, conjecture being one of them. It simply means to make a guess, an intelligent guess, to surmise, to make a guess. So one more time, you have a student who makes the conjecture that for any integer n, the quantity 4n plus 3 will represent a prime number. That's his conjecture, that's his guess. Let's see what they say. It says, which of the following values of n, these are the following values of n, which of the following value of n can be employed to disprove his conjecture, to disprove his conjecture. And this is one of those questions where we have to indicate indicate all such answers, all such values, which is probably one of the reasons why sometimes people do poorly in this, these type of questions, because they don't, they, they don't take their time, and the very first one they find that works, they say, well, that's the answer. But that is one of the answer choices. We don't know how many others, how many other valid answer choices are there among, among all that are there. Here we only have five answer choices. Sometimes they have six, seven, eight. Sometimes I have seen as many as ten answer choices. And if out of those ten answer choices, four of them are valid, then we must mark all four of them. Otherwise, you will not get credit for that question. Do you understand? Enough said. Let's get going. So we're just going to start using these numbers, put it in his, put it in his formula, his conjecture, and see if we can disprove it that. It doesn't necessarily have to be a prime number. Let's begin. Let's put in a, a. So our quantity that we have is 4n plus 3. And a, n equals 1. So 4 times 1 plus 3 is 7. And 7 is a prime number. Since 7 is a prime number, we cannot use that quantity to disprove him. A does not work. Because we are looking for some, some number that we can use to disprove his assertion, to disprove his claim, to disprove his conjecture, to disprove his uh, guess. Do you understand? A does not work. Let's look at B. Because that was the prime number. What he's claiming is that, what he's claiming is that if n is an integer, then this quantity will always be a prime number. That's what he's claiming. And when we plug in 1, that was a prime number. So we were unable to disprove him. Let's look at B. B says 3. So now we have 4 times 3 plus 3. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, and 15 is not a prime number. It is not a prime number. He made a claim, he made a claim that this quantity will represent a prime number. Well, it's, it's not a prime number when n is equal to 3. So there we go, we just proved, we just disproved his assertion, we just disproved his conjecture. That, that, that claim is not valid. The claim was that 4 times n plus 3, given the fact that n is an, even uh, n is an integer, that quantity, he says, will be a prime number. It is not. When n equals 3, it's not a prime number. There you go. We just found one answer choice. We just found one answer choice. It may be the only answer choice, or there might be more. We have to keep on going until we have exhausted all the possibilities. If there were more answer choices, 
uh, E, F, G, H, I, J, whatever it is, we have to go through every one of them. It's not like regular multiple choice questions where you find one answer that, that is right, then as long as you're confident, confident about your work, then you know there are no other answer choices. That's not the case here. So B works. Let's look at C. Let's look at C. In C, n equals 4. In C, n equals 4. So we have 4 times 4 plus 3, which is 19. And 19 is a prime number. So we are unable to disprove it. We are unable to disprove it. It's like a double negative. In other words, we cannot prove it. Uh, we are unable to disprove it. Do you understand? Uh, which means his assertion is correct based on this quantity. So C is not the answer. Let's look at D. D says n is 6. 4 times 6 plus 3. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. And 27 is not a prime number. There you go. We found one more. We found one more value of n that we can use to disprove his conjecture. But so far we have two answer choices. B and D so far. Let's look at the last one. E. See what happens. E says, E says that n is 7. So 4 times 7 plus 3. 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 3 is 31. And 31 is a prime number. So we are unable to disprove it. So among the answer choices that are given, there are two that can be used. There are two values of n that can be used to disprove the guy, namely 3 and 6. The correct answer choice is the 3 and 6. In the event that you're curious as to how people did on this, how people perform on this question on the real exam, about half the people got it right. A little over half the people had no trouble with it. 53% of the people got it right. Tomorrow will be our very last meeting. Today we did question number four, which was the penultimate question from the second test. There are only two exams that they give you at the end of the book. And today we did the penultimate question, second to the last question. We learned this word as well also a long time ago in our vocabulary lesson. Vocabulary lessons. Just type in GRE vocabulary word, GRE vocabulary words, day 11. The video will pop right up. Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. So today was our penultimate lesson. We did question number 24, the penultimate question from the second test. Tomorrow we'll meet for the very last time. We'll do problem number 25 and we'll say farewell to each other. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.